I'm Brian Bankson from the Cinco Ranch Branch Library, and welcome to Episode 5 of What Makes This Photograph Great, where we analyze point by point, element by element, pixel by pixel, what makes a photograph worth looking at. Each episode I choose a master photographer and focus on a particular photograph from their repertoire that I really dig. Today we're going to look at Dutch photographer Anton Corbian. Now I've been wanting to do a video on Anton Corbian for a while now. You could say he is the photographer who got me into photography. He was most certainly the only photographer I was familiar with before I took up and studied photography. And the reason I was familiar with him and his work was because he photographed the musical acts I listened to growing up, namely the British New Wave of the 1980s. I remember back in the late 80s when I bought Depeche Mode's newest album on vinyl. Compact discs were a thing back then, but I still bought my music on vinyl. It was almost a ritual to pull the record on, put the record on for the first time, look at the cover, cover art, as well as the insert, which had the lyrics and more art and photography. I remember seeing Anton's name listed in the credits on so many of these inserts. And you often don't realize how important striking visuals can be in accompanying great music. A great musical album appeals to as many senses as possible. Anton was born in 1955 in the Netherlands. In 1975, he started photographing a local Dutch musician named Herman Brood in a cafe. His work then started to regularly appear in a London-based weekly music paper called New Musical Express. The list of musical acts Anton has photographed reads as a who's who of the British New Wave move movement. Joy Division, Tom Waits, Iggy Pop, Bjork, Mark Almond, Morrissey, Susie and the Banshees, Peter Murphy, Nick Caves, Simple Minds, R.E.M., and the Eurythmics. He is most famous for his work with Depeche Mode and U2, creating all their visuals, including album art, photography, music videos, and stage vis vis visuals for a number of years. To this day, Anton Corbian shoots medium and large format film, mostly black and white, and only occasionally venturing into color. His st signature style is shooting with a very high film speed, which produces a photograph with lots of grain. In addition to photography, he has directed a number of films, including 2007's Control, which was a British biographical film about the life of Ian Curtis, the frontman for Joy Division, who committed suicide in 1980. So now, let's take a look at the photograph I have chosen to critique. If you haven't already figured out, figured out what it is yet, I'll give you a little hint. For many of the previous photographers I've done videos on, I picked a photograph that was representative of their work, but I would say that this photograph is truly iconic, in that many of you, especially if you are Generation X, will have seen or be very familiar with this photograph. This photograph is of the Irish band U2 and is on the cover of what is arguably the best U2 album, The Joshua Tree, which was released in 1987. It was photographed at Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California. Anton used a panoramic film camera for the shot. I'm guessing either a medium or large format camera. So let's start like we usually do with composition. As you can see, the subjects of the photo are in the left third of the composition. Now originally, the album cover was going to be a photograph of one of the Joshua trees in the desert, with this photo being in the inside sleeve of the record, but the band changed its mind after seeing this image. Thematically, the Joshua Tree album juxtaposes uh, antipathy towards the United States against the band's deep fascination with the country, its open spaces, freedoms, and ideals. Bono, the lead singer of U2, wanted the visuals to be in a desert. Bono said, the desert was immensely inspirational to us as a mental image for this record. Most people would take the desert on face value and think it's some kind of barren place, which of course is true. But in the right frame of mind, it's also a very positive image because you can actually do something with a blank canvas, which is effectively what the desert is. 
So let's talk about the main criticism I have of this image, and that is the idea of the cliché. Now, when you think about cliché album cover photographs, this is exactly what comes to mind. The band standing in a scenic location with serious looks on their face, often with one band member staring to the side. In fact, on the animated show South Park, they make fun of this exact cliché when the characters form a Christian rock band and this is their album cover. All clichés, of course, have a beginning, an original idea that others copy or emulate. I'm not saying that U2's The Joshua Tree was the first album cover in history to use this format. There surely were similar album covers throughout the 60s and 70s. But was it considered as much as a cliché as it is now, uh, as it is now, back in 1987, the answer is well, maybe. Any cliche becomes more of a cliche over time. So in 1987, maybe it wasn't as much as a cliche yet. But even Anton himself said he thought the photo was a little more serious than he thought the band was going for. But sometimes cliches work. In this instance, I think it works for this particular album, for this particular band, at that particular time. The photo without any context may be cliché, but the art of this kind of photography necessitates matching the tone of the photograph with the tone of the music. I think Anton is so successful in what he does because he is really into the music. This is all about meshing visuals with sound to create a complementary experience. When I see an Anton Corbin photograph of my favorite band, Depeche Mode, I can hear the music in my head. And I feel what it was like to open up that album for the first time, looking at the art and letting the music take me away. I hope you got something useful from this video. Next month we will be critiquing a local Texas fine art photographer named Keith Carter. Until then, keep shooting!